Greetings, children of the screen. Your friendly neighborhood nerds come here once again. And, you know, I wasn't going to kick off my new series, The Batman I Believe In, until next month, which is a show where basically I just talk about anything and everything Batman. But with the news that maybe kind of sort of broke earlier today, it feels like this is good as spot as any to do kind of an unofficial launch of the series. So today we're going to be taking a few minutes to talk about Robert Pattinson potentially being cast as Batman. Uh, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and jump into it, guys. So yeah, Robert Pattinson, first off, it's not official. It's not 100%. It's not for sure. But obviously, in the world we live in right now with these kind of things, speculation is the same as fact, and a hundred articles are being written on it, and people are reacting in about the same way that I expected they would, which is that they are absolutely freaking out. Um, so I'm going to go out and just go ahead and say, I support this casting decision if it does end up to be him that they're going to go with for the Matt Reeves Batman for a multitude of reasons. And actually, I think that this really is actually the perfect casting for this type of movie. And I will explain why throughout the course of this video. But first off, what I want to say is like, I know that there is a lot of negative connotations associated with Robert Pattinson because of the Twilight franchise. Uh, but most people who hate him on the grounds of that have never really watched any of the indie movies or the more art house films that he's done. And for those of you who have, you can attest to this. Whenever he's given a role of some kind of substance where there's actually something for him to invest himself in and it's a solid script, he puts in 110%. Uh, he is a very talented, versatile, and dedicated actor who, if he is cast in the role of Batman, I have no doubt he will dedicate himself 100% to it. Because again, like, a lot of the actors who've played superheroes in the past, they don't really look the part in terms of body build, which I know is a big complaint I've been hearing recently for Robert Pattinson, but if you're a movie star, and you get a role, and your job is to transform your body to be that character... Robert Pattinson is one of the actors who I feel confident would put forth the effort and the time in the gym to make himself be as much like Batman as possible, keeping in mind that this is going to be a younger, kind of early stage in his career Batman, so he's not going to be like the bulky Ben Affleck, like muscle-bound, like Hulk Batman. It's going to be more of a very like firm, sleek, kind of uh, athletic Batman. So, again, having said that, like I think he's a very good choice for the role, and here are some of the other reasons why. Like, again, on top of the fact that he's just a great actor in general, because everyone associates him with the Twilight franchise, he has also, but then at the same time, on the other side of his career, he's done so much stuff and got legitimate cred inside, like, the acting circles, where, like, people who know acting know that he is a good actor. He's at that point now in his career where the right role can completely shift the perception of him. Like, he's got the cred now, and he's got the recognizability, and he's at that point in his career, because that was when he was so much younger, he could shift that public appear like a public opinion with this movie. Because people tend to forget that, like, when Christian Bale was cast as Batman, like, he was the guy from... American Psycho and from the Shaft movie. He played the rich white boy villain in the Shaft movie. When Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker, he was that guy from 10 Things I Hate About You and A Knight's Tale. He wasn't being taken seriously by the general public as like a, ex the extremely talented actor he was, but anyone could see by looking at his back catalog of smaller indie films that he was amazing at what he did. By the same right, when Michael Keaton was cast as Batman, and that's a whole different kind of movie, don't get me wrong, but when he was cast as Batman, he was best known at that time for like Beetlejuice and Mr. Mom. Every actor who's been cast as Batman that we have all been just like blown away by, part of the reason for that is because they're an actor who the public opinion of them is set in a way that they don't seem like someone who would fit into the mold. And by reshaping themselves to kind of redefine that mold is what's given us these memorable, unique, like entertaining and enduring performances from these actors. And I think Robert Pattinson is in the perfect place in his career that, like, what we as fans need and want from this movie and what he as an actor needs and wants for his career, they just synchronize perfectly. Um, again, for people who are still uncertain, go look at his other movies, okay, guys? Look at, like, Maps of the Stars and Good Time and uh, uh, Fear and Shame and Life. Um, 
And then also specifically go look at Cosmopolis, which is the movie David Cronenberg did with him, where like, obviously it's not a one-to-one -one comparison to Bruce Wayne, but if you just look at the different levels he plays with that character, as well as some of these others I've mentioned, you can see the makings of a great Bruce Wayne Batman in there, especially if Matt Reeves does what he says he wants to do, which is do a more kind of stripped down detective noir story with Batman, then yeah, like, yeah, Home Dude is gonna be good for that. Playing like the dark, kind of quiet, broody version of characters is something that is definitely within his wheelhouse and that really plays to his strengths. He's also very charming and charismatic, so when he needs to do the Bruce Wayne stuff, I have no doubt he can do that. And once he gets the muscle and stuff, I have no doubt that he'll look not exactly like Bruce Wayne, but he will look comparable to the way that we see Bruce Wayne in our heads. Because again, like Christian Bale, no matter how buff he got, you put him in a suit, he still kind of just looks like a regular dude, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, again, think that this is actually a very good choice if they do decide to go with this, and I would be very excited to see this movie. But that's just me personally. Go look at some of these other movies that I've mentioned, guys, if you're not so certain about him in this role. Because one of the things that I feel is key in playing Batman, and it's like, as much as I did actually enjoy certain aspects of Ben Affleck's performance, and I thought he was a good fit for the role, one of the things he didn't have that for me is like key and essential in a Batman is an actor who, when you look into their eyes, you feel like they are someone who would dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to one thing in the way that Batman does. And I definitely got that from Christian Bale, despite the fact of the way that they ended up writing his character with him so flippy floppy, I don't really want to be Batman. <laughs> um, and when I see certain performances from Robert Pattinson, I get that same vibe of someone who is obsessively dedicated to whatever endeavor they're going after. And um, that is something that I feel is essential in playing Batman. And the truth of the matter is, we've never seen a movie with Batman as young as they're going to be portraying him, or as early on in his career as they're going to be portraying him, because even Christian Bale's Batman, mind you, he was probably about the same age and stuff, but like, that's kind of a whole nother thing, and as much as like I love Batman Begins, he I never believed Christian Bale as a 20-year-old. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, at this point, I imagine we're starting with him already being Batman, and we're just going to dive into like an awesome detective story with Matt Reeves, with uh, Pattinson. Like, I think that that's a really good combination, and the other thing that makes me think this is probably a good idea is like, for the longest time, I've done my own Batman fan casting, like most of us. And I've always leaned towards, like, older actors and stuff like that. But since Pattinson came up, all of a sudden, like, ideas for other characters start popping into my head for actors who could play them, who would play good against Pattinson. And I'm like, oh, wow, this actually opens up a whole new realm of possibilities, especially because as far as we know, this movie won't, we're not going to see this Batman show up in, like, a Justice League movie, or at least not in the formation that we now see Justice League in the previous movie, if that even gets another sequel, which is, I think at this point is highly unlikely. But yeah, I don't think he's going to show up in a Justice League movie. It's just they're worrying about doing a Batman story and maybe doing more out of that, but really focusing on the first one, which I think is highly important. But again, like once you have him in there, it kind of opens up a lot of other possibilities because again, he has a reputation among actors of being a great actor. So there's a lot of young, up-and-coming actors who are really going to work with him. But just off the top of my head, like, with him as Batman, Kill Landry Jones would make an amazing Riddler. Just, oh, God, such an amazing Riddler. And the list goes on, but you know what? I think that's a whole nother video, and I think I've taken enough time on this tonight. So anyway, guys, let me know down in the comments, what do you think about Robert Pattinson as Batman? Has the argument I've put forth hold any weight with you, or are you still dead set that this is going to be the worst Batman movie since they put nips on him? Let me know down there below. Also, like this video and share it with some friends. I'd really appreciate it. Hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.